Hey everyone, hey Tom Gillis here, Tom Gillis Golf Instruction. So I'm just going to talk about the FedEx Cup playoffs and a grip tip today, okay? So it's very important how you hold that club, otherwise all the other tips I give you aren't going to work. So if you're holding it wrong, it's going to mess it up. So we'll get to that in a second, but right now let's just talk about the FedEx Cup playoffs. Who thinks they're stupid? I do, okay? Because you have 125 guys today playing top 70 for next week. 10 people might have a chance, maybe a little more. Again, don't quote me on that, but not many people are going to jump into the top 70. It's just not going to happen. The top 100 and on, forget it. No chance. Unless they win. But they're not going to win. That's why they're 125. Not going to happen. So we need to get a better playoff system. There used to be a tournament around here that the top 125 played, the Deutsche Bank, TPC Boston. Went to it every year, had a blast, blah, blah, blah. Fun to watch. Love it. But it's not playoffs. You know, it's just not playoffs. It's just not. We enjoy going, watch the tournament, take the kids, the family. Everybody loves it. Obviously, we're, we're into golf, but it's not playoffs. And the people that don't know golf are going, how is this a playoff? But wh who wins? Do they go home? Well, those guys go home because they had no shot. But back then, it went from 125 to 100. So a little bit more realistic for next week. But now, no chance. Maybe one of the top 80, 70 to 80 can get into the top 70. But it's still not playoffs. Who cares about them anyways, right? We want to look at the top guys based on the points, right? No, but look at basketball. One through 64, they play each other. Boom. The worst team could beat the best team and they're out. You know what I mean? So that's something that we're going to uh, talk about. Well, why not have that happen? You know, so have the first two weeks, uh, the, the, the first week, the best players get a bye. The second week, they, they maintain their position and then the next... Well, have the same, yeah, have them just move up to try to get into the top 64. Have them play this week. The best players get a bye, top five. Next week, they all play, okay? Cut, cut it down to, say, 20 guys this week, whatever. And then have the one versus 64, two versus 63, that type of thing, like the NCAA. Because the best teams in, in football, they get a bye. So Scotty Scheffler and Sam Burns and um, who, Will, whoever's up there, Will Zalatoris, I'm not sure who it is. Justin Thomas, a couple of those guys should get a bye for having a great season, okay? Just like the Patriots got the bye, the, the Chiefs get the bye, that's fine. But but get it to the point where they can have one versus 64, that's the playoffs, you know, where Will Will can lose and he's out to Kramer Hickok, or Lee Hodges can beat um, Scotty Shuffler. That's playoffs, that's excitement. I think it'll bring more fans to the to the game and watch it. Wow, oh, this is for the, for the, he's out, he's the best player team, and he's out if he loses? Wow, that's playoffs, right? So I just think it's foolish. And they're giving away a shitload of money, which is fine. But Ricky Fowler's got no chance of what Zero chance. He made it in great and all that. He's happy. It's good to watch him play. I'm a fan of Ricky Fowler's. He brings people to the game and all that. But he's playing dog shit. But maybe one day he can get lucky in a match play and beat Scotty Shuffler. So let's try to get it to that. Let's see that happen. You know what I mean? Let's get it to where it's an actual playoff system. And it means something. Have It's got to be. Match play is fun, you know. They have that match play during the summer, and, and that's a kind of a weird one, but it's still fun to watch. You know, it means something. This is to, to win the hole. This is to win the match, you know. But they don't think they really give a shit, these guys trying on that. They, they do, but it's not like it's for a lot of money, 20 million bucks or something, you know what I mean? So I don't know. What, are your, what do you think? You know, put the comments down below. Tell me if I'm crazy or you think that's a good move or what you guys have an idea for. You know, I'm going to think more about it, you know, because this is going to be going on forever, you know, and try to come up with a plan and, and talk to other people I know in the business and what they think should happen. You know what I mean? So I don't know what's a perfect way to do it, but I'd rather see a knockout round somehow. That would make it so much better, you know, a knockout round. And uh, you, but you still get to see the best players play the last day. You only get, you know, one group or have a consolation match or something. So but that's that. I don't know, just my thoughts on it. I just think the way they do it now is not realistic. It's not playoffs. Or just call it something else. Don't call it the playoffs. Call it something else. You know what I mean? So that's my thought on that. And if you would, while you're watching, please subscribe and uh, like the channel. So that helps me grow the channel. I got giveaways coming up. Titleist golf balls, golf clubs, uh, putting mirrors, lessons, free online lessons. You know, those are pretty good. Yeah, don't forget I do those too. Tom Gillis at PJ.com. Send me your pictures and uh, send me an email first and we can set it up. Online coaching. So if you're getting ready for a tournament, I can teach you how to prepare for that. Work on your game and all that stuff. So uh, online lessons are way cheaper than in-person lessons. And uh, 
as you can see, I love the game and I'm passionate about helping people. And uh, that's what I want to do is help you all get better and learn the game from my 35 years of experience. My puppy's sleeping right there, so that's a good thing. So let's talk about the grip, okay? The grip is very important in the club. It's, it's your wrist, how it, you know, people tell me about wrist angles and all that stuff, right? So if the club is in the proper spot in your hand, those wrist angles will take care of itself. I don't think about my wrist hinge going back, okay? I just don't do it. But the club is in the right spot in my hand. Now that doesn't mean strong or weak, okay? It doesn't mean strong or weak. It's where it is in my left hand, my top hand as a right-handed player. So you can see it's in the fingers. So the fat of my hand is actually pushing down and this pinky is pulling up. So that's why I can hold the club up like this. I mean, it's toe up, no problem. I can go up and down with one wrist. See my wrist now. I haven't been playing a lot because of my knee. That kind of hurts, but it shouldn't hurt, okay? It hurts my wrist a little bit, I haven't used it. But right here, I can stand here all day, talk to you all day and hold it like this, no problem. Then I grab it, boom, right hand covers that thumb. Now that's an overlap grip, right? That's just my preference, I don't know why. Honestly, people say it helps you release it, this and that, who knows, no clue why. This is uncomfortable to me, the interlock, and then you got your baseball 10 finger grip. Whatever's comfortable for you, okay? A lot of women that aren't as strong, older women that aren't as strong, use that 10 finger. Some guys use a 10 finger. There's no way to me to just say, use that grip. You, you pick what's comfortable first off, okay? And then work with it. Try it like this, try it like this, and try the overlap. Okay, it overlaps my pinky here. Whatever's comfortable for you is what you gotta do, okay? No one can tell you what's, what you have to do it this way. But you have to hold it in the fingers more, in the palm, the, the pad of your top hand is on top pushing down so now my wrist hinges no problem see that so when i go back it's hinged perfect i don't care i don't look at when i'm taking my backswing i just hold it properly again i'm not choking the club i'm holding it pretty firm with my left hand sure and my right hand pops on there like this so you'll be able to see there's the grip right there so whoops pretty strong right with that left hand and i, I play a push fade as you know, if you're watching my other videos, and you'll learn that too soon, but if I don't have this club in my left hand properly, I can't hold the club out. I mean, the wrist hinge won't work on its own. See that? Perfect. That's all I want. I don't think about it. It's just a reaction to based on how I hold it in the fingers or that top hand more, okay? If you hold it in the palm, your wrist won't hinge properly. It'll literally turn sideways. As you can see, if I try to do it, I'm going to turn my hand up. See how the club turns? I can't do it. Put it in my fingers all day. So and that's a power source too. That's something that's going to make you smash the ball a mile. A wrist hinge and a good wrist cock is going to send it, you know, and, and your hands won't twist and turn. Your wrist won't hurt. You, it just fits in your hand properly when you do it. So practice doing this too. Here's a good drill. So to put it where well, you can hold it out like this, okay? See how it's just staying there? Look, it up and down. No problem. And boom, there's my grip. Now I put it in my palm. So it's, I can't control it. <laughs> it literally, you literally can't do it. Try it for yourself. You'll see. I'm not, this isn't a, an act. You know, this is the way it works. There's my five iron, my Titleist AP2 here from the olden days. But see how that left hand, and practice with your left hand holding it like I'm doing. I've given a million lessons. I've played a million rounds of golf. I never get this grip wrong. I just hold it like this all day. So watch the, um, the golf today or tomorrow or at work and just practice holding it with your top hand if you're if you're left-handed obviously you do the opposite you put it in the in the fingers of your of your right hand you know but it's your top hand boom hold it like that get the feel of it try hitting some little chip shots with just one hand you know boom boom get the feel of the the swing with that left hand okay the top hand and then that right hand just covers on top boom there that's what it looks like on the bottom you know and there it is there, you know. But the top hand's most important. I really don't care what the, the bottom hand does. You know, as long as it kind of matches. It's almost like my thumb is going over my other thumb. It's matching it, you know what I mean? So the palms are facing each other if you could, you know. And if you want, like I said, when we do the online lessons, I have people take a picture of the grip and send it to me. And, um, and I can tell you if it's legit or not, but that's easy. You can do it yourself. It's not that hard. Just get it in that left hand, boom, in those fingers. Practice holding it like this. So this is pressure down, this is pressure up. That's why I can hold the club like that with no, with no pain. It does not hurt at all. You can do the stand here all day long as we get going. Another thing too is look at your gloves, people. Look at your gloves. Now, I have gloves, but that don't have the problem I'm gonna show you.
but at the top of the glove, there's a worn out mark in the palm. You'll see a, a worn out mark right there, okay? Up by your, right by the way, the pad and the, the two fat parts here, where they meet, there'll be a worn out spot there. That means the club is too far up in your hand, okay? And it's moving. So that's what's causing you to rip your gloves and lose your, your, um, your grip on the club and lose control of the club. Then you're gonna squeeze it tighter because the club's moving, right? So look at your own gloves and you can see that that, that worn out spot up there is means the club's moving in your hand, okay? Because that's very important. So all the other stuff I'm gonna show you to rotate and turn your body is, is gonna work with a proper grip. So if I'm holding it right, my wrist is gonna hinge properly. Then I'm gonna be able to rotate my shoulder more, which will keep my, my left arm from bending, you know? Your left arm bends because you don't rotate your body enough because your grip sucks, okay? It's all related, okay? You don't have to worry about the top of your swing. I don't worry about it. I worry about where I'm going. So if I'm going to hit it over my bag or at that those two trees back there, I look at those two trees and, and I just go because I know I'm holding it properly. You know, I know I'm holding the club right. The grip pressure is, is firm. It's not choking it. You know, I'm not holding it like a bird. I never held a bird in my hand. But you're just a good firm grip. But the, usually you, you, you do get firmer as you swing. So you get like more tense as you swing. So a little, you know light firm pressure in those hands and as you go back you tend to grip it tighter okay so if you're already holding it tight you're going to either tend to end up holding it too loose or it's just going to lose control but i digress from all that i want to get back to that top hand having it in those fingers not in the palm so check that out on it's easy to do look at it look at your gloves first your gloves will tell you right away if you're holding it wrong if you're going through gloves and the palm wearing out the palm you're holding it wrong. It's that simple, okay? Get it in those fingers, get the pad of the hand on top, and that'll tell you where you're holding it, okay? And the next point too is where your wrist hinges is over the shaft. Let's see if I can do this. It's over the shaft. So my wrist hinges here and it goes through the shaft. So now when I hold it, it goes up and down, see? No problem. If I have it in my palm, I move the club in my palm, I go up, the club turns. I can't, I can't go straight up and down. See, I have to turn. It's just you have to manipulate it because your wrist wasn't designed that way. So this, this wrist has to be over the shaft, the wrist hinge point. So what I'll do with a lesson is I'll put a mark on people's gloves right there and under the fat part. So the fat part goes on the grip and this mark goes down the shaft so you can see down the shaft. So if I was to shoot a, a gun through my hand right here at my wrist hinge, wrist hinge point, it would hit the, it would hit the shaft. Now, if I hold it in the palm, if I did it, it would be to the left of the shaft, my left, which is bad. Now my wrist won't work properly, okay? So pretty simple stuff to do, right? And practice that watching the golf, like I said, watching the golf today or whatever you're doing, and, and you will notice more power, more control, you know, hit some little chip shots with it, you know, get a wedge out and practice hitting little chip shots. Just practice doing this like I was showing you, and you will see a huge difference in your golf swing. It'll allow you to do all the other stuff more freely because it is, it's all a domino effect and everything gets easier. Hopefully that helped you. Email me, tomgillis at pga.com if I wasn't clear enough. Um, I kind of wing these, I don't have um, I don't have scripts and all that stuff. It's hot as, as you know what out here, I'm sweating like a mule, I apologize for that. But um, you know, leave comments down below, like it, share the channel, tell your friends. If you don't hold it right, you know, so it's called get a grip for success here. If you hold it wrong, you're screwed. You know, if you hold it wrong, you're screwed. So again, I appreciate you watching the show. The, the FedEx Cup playoffs need to be revamped somehow. Let's have a one verse 64 NCAA basketball bracket type thing going on. Um, that would be awesome. And, you know, make sure you get your top hand. If you're a left-hander, obviously do the opposite. But your top hand, your, my right hand has to be in those fingers for more control of that club. So at the top of my swing, my wrist is like that, matching the club face is square. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, I do have a strong grip, but I use a lot of body rotation in my swing. I hit the ball, used to hit the ball a mile. Older now, not quite a mile, but still pretty far. You'd take it, trust me. And uh, I can control it better. So that all starts with that grip. So get a grip for control, get a grip for success. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Like, subscribe, all that fancy stuff. I will see you on the next video. Watch my other videos and you can tie all this stuff together. And again, thank you so much. I will talk to you soon. Tom Gillis, checking out.
Thank you.